Hi friends, welcome to Taming Pratan series. In this video, we are going to talk about how to run external OS commands or other languages in Python using the subprocess module. The subprocess module generally comes installed along with Python, so you don't need to install it separately. All right, now let's talk about the use cases. The first use case is basically running commands on the OS command line. So basically, if you have some command to run and you want to automate running that command and you want to get the output of that command from command line using Python, you can do it using subprocess. So let's take an example now. All right, I opened my command prompt and let me run a command called ping and I'll just ping google.com. And after pinging google.com, I got some result in my command line. So instead of doing this task manually, I can automate this task and run this command using Python and you know take this result from the command line and interpret it and apply some business logic on this command line result and automate my task for example i can just see this lost equal to how much percent and say whether the ping is good or not so if i just get this string lost equal to zero zero percent lost that means i can declare that google is pinging nicely so now i can ping some thousands of websites and get to know which one is pinging good. So that was one use case running OS commands or calling external programs. The next case is basically interfacing with other languages like Java, .NET, etc. Run the code in that language and get the results from there. This might not seem usual, but actually in real world, many of the legacy systems or some code which is already implemented would be in a different language, but you want to do analysis with that language results in Python. So how can you communicate with those languages, other languages in Python? One way is to create REST APIs and create a REST API server and talk to it using Python. And another way is to create a console application in that language so that it can interface using command line and call that console application from Python so that you can input data to that console application and get the results from that console application using the command line. This way you can communicate with other languages or command line using this subprocess module in Python. Let's talk about an example. You know, this is a simple C sharp code. So basically if I give a command line argument called ABCD, it will say hello ABCD. So this is a C sharp code. So how can I interface with this? Here you can see the result is being given to the command line. So let's try to run this C sharp code and see how the results would be. So I'll just write .NET run because this is a .NET code and I'll just give an input name called James. So if I write .NET run James, I should get hello James. So I got the result as hello James. So if a Python program runs it command .NET James and in the output it will get hello James. That means a Python program is able to give input to the .NET code using command line and extracting the results from the .NET code using this command line output. So this is the second use case I was talking about which is interfacing with other languages over command line. So let's try to use subprocess. How it works? Subprocess actually creates a child process basically a child command line process and gives inputs and takes outputs using the command line output error and output pipes. So basically it reads the command line, that's all. And after the execution, you will even get the return code. It's like HTTP status code so that you can get the status of execution also. All right, enough talking, let's try to code it. So it's really simple. Just you have to create a p open object, which is a child process object. You just import it from the sub process module from sub process import p open and you give the command line in words array that means to write ping google.com you have to separate it as single words and give it as an array so ping google.com is given as ping google.com two separate words in a list and you supply it to the popen and you have to write std out equal to pipe and std error equal to pipe that means the output streams and error streams of the sub process which you are going to run are being piped into the process so just remember you have to write these two, that's all. And then you got your child process object. Now just say process.communicate and you'll get the output string and error strings in two different variables like a tuple shown here. And just use the output in the output string here. I'll just decode it as UTF-8 because it's a string output which I'm showing there. And I've decoded the error string also. Now I got the response string and the error string. And now you can run business logic over this command line output. So as we just discussed, if you have lost equal to zero and zero percent lost in the string of the response, then the ping is good. 
So if I say lost equal to 0, 0% 0 lost in the response, then it's a perfect ping. Otherwise, it's not a perfect ping. Now imagine you can run 1000 ping requests using a single code, just write a for loop and you can ping 1000 hosts. Now you can see sub process is very useful and powerful. All right, let's try to write that code now. I'm going to create a new file. I'll just name it index.py. And here I'm going to first import the sub process module from sub process import p open. So basically it opens the trail process and you need to import the pipe which is an integer you will use it in the function so first define your command so i'm going to define my command command equal to and my command is ping google.com now create a trail process object right so i'm going to create an object called proc equal to p open of the command but the command should be a list of words right so my command dot split of space now instead of writing a list and having words ping google.com i've just split this list by space so it looks more readable that's all and then i'm going to write std out equal to pipe and std error equal to pipe so basically i'm telling that the command line output should be pipe to the python variables now i got my child process ready let's try to run the process so i'm going to write proc dot communicate and this will give two variables in return as tuples so that will be the out string and the error string and so now if you run the chain process you can get the output and error strings in these two variables now let's try to decode them as utf8 because our outputs are human readable string output so i'm going to write response equal to out string dot decode of utf8 and i'm going to copy this line again i'm going to write error string is equal to error string of utf8 so i'm decoding them as utf8 string so that it can be readable utf8 strings now just let's try to print them that's all print of response and print of error string let's try to run them now and now you can see python has printed the response so let's try to create some boundaries in the printing so that i can know what is errors and what is the response so i'm going to just print a random string here so that i can find a boundary now let's run the python script again and here you can see i've got my response string and the error string is not present because we have no errors so if the program throws some errors, it will be propagated in the error string. So this can be very useful to understand whether the program has successfully completed or it has thrown errors. And one more thing you can do here is you can check whether running the process is throwing errors or not. So you can just create a try except block so that you can catch errors while running the child process. And in order to do graceful completion, if I have errors, I'm just going to kill the process. And since this section doesn't have any significance if the process is not run, I'm going to just quit my process here. So things like creating this try except blocks can increase the predictability of your Python code. Now let's try to apply some business logic on this response. So here I'm telling if this string is present in the response, then it's a perfect ping. Otherwise, it's not a perfect ping. So let's try to save this and let's try to run this. And that's it. I've got a perfect ping and the error string is not and there is no error in the error string. So this is it. Using very less lines of code, you are able to create a child process and communicate with it and extract the output from the command line and execute your custom business logic on the response of the sub process. All right. Now let's try to understand how to change the working directory of the command line. So basically, if I run this Python script, a command line will be run, right? I'm running ping google.com. At which folder will this command line run is basically the folder of the index.py Python file. But if I have a batch file, something like this, hello.bat, it just echoes hello input. So basically, if you write hello.bat James, it will say hello James. But this batch file is not present in the same folder as the index.py, but it's present in the bat folder. So how can I change the working directory of my command line? It's really simple. You just have to give another input to this. Just write cwd change working directory is equal to you can give absolute windows or linux path or you can give relative path also so i'm going to give you the relative path which is the bat folder so this is my relative path bat folder and in that i have a batch file right so i will give the working directory as bat folder and the command would be not ping google.com the command would be hello dot bat and james so it's going to give hello james and that's it let's try to print the outputs so before running the python let's try to see how the batch file works i'm going to open a terminal here and i'm going to write hello dot bat james and it's going to give hello james so the same thing should come in our python file let's try to do that so i'm going to run my python file so it's telling 
system can't find the file specified because there is one caveat while running the batch scripts in windows you have to write shell equal to true so let's try to run it again and then you'll get the output as hello james so now if you have an exe file and you want to interface with it just change your working directory to that exe file and run the command using that exe file and you can give command line inputs just like this example and get the outputs from the process communication into the output string and use it for your business logic so that's how you can use change working directory to run commands present in different folder all right let's get to the next example which is running other languages from command line so i have this folder called compute and in this compute folder i have a program called program.cs and this is basically a dotnet project and you don't need to know dotnet now i'll just show you how i run this program so i'll just open a command line in this compute folder open an integrated terminal so i got a terminal in my compute folder and then i'm going to run this project using dotnet run the command line argument is james so if i run this i'm going to get hello james so i can run this dotnet code using this command dotnet run james so just make the command as dotnet run and i'm giving the input to this command but my folder is compute now so i'm going to change the working directory as compute and since it's not a batch file remove this shell equal to true and let's try to run this now and here you have the output of the dotnet code let's try to do some computation now i'm going to change my program.cs now this code does very simple thing just it will take two arguments and multiply them and give it in the command line so let's try to run this now i have opened the command line in this compute folder and i'm going to say dot net run 55 and 66 and if i run this you're going to get the product of 55 and 66 so basically this program can be an engine in dot net that can give output to the python code so let's try to use this in our python code so now i've changed my command as dot net run 55 66 and i've changed my working directory to the compute folder so let's try to run this and in the output you got the result which is computed from dotnet in python now let's try to create a function that talks to dotnet and gives you the results so i'm just going to write a function def compute and it's going to take two numbers number one and number two and it's going to run this whole sub process thing so let's try to indent this so that i can get it into our function number one and number two and it's going to be a formatted string and now my result will be in the response right but i have to check if the program has given me errors or not so for that i'm going to write if error string is not zero length that means i've got some error i'm going to return none and here also instead of quitting i'm going to return none and if there is no error i can send the response by parsing it as an integer right so the result equal to float of the response string and you're going to return this result so for now let's try to comment this print statements and that's it now i got a function which interfaces with dot net and gets you results so i'm just writing print compute 50 comma 20 so let's try to run this now and you got thousand so let's try to give some invalid things so if I write 50 comma ABCD and if I run this, I should not get an error because I'm actually catching the error and returning none and you got none. So this way using sub process communication, you can actually interface with other languages and create your own modules in Python. This can be any complicated thing. Just give the inputs to the command line and extract the outputs from the console. All right, that's how you can run other languages from command line using Python sub process. Notice one thing, I'm running the command .NET run. That means I have .NET installed in my PC. But if I go to a PC where I don't have .NET installed, this command is going to fail. That means our Python code is depending on .NET. The same will apply to other languages also. Like if you want to run Java code, Java should be installed in your computer. So how can we resolve this problem? Just create an executable file from that language you are running and use that executable file which is portable and doesn't have any dependencies and run that in python so let's try to create a portable executable file from this dotnet application so that i can run it in python so for that i've got a command in dotnet called dotnet publish win x64 because this is my windows application and i'm writing publish single file true and self-contained equal to true so basically i'm creating a portable exe file out of this dotnet application so let's try to run this and now after publishing you can see in win win x64 publish folder let's try to open a terminal here i've got only two files which is compute.exe and compute.pdb and one compute.exe file should be able to run this dotnet code so let's try to write compute.exe 5 comma 4 and now you should get 20. let's try to run it again 
and now I got a portable exe file which I can use in my python applications without any dependencies on development environments. So while integrating other languages with python just explore if you can create self-contained exe applications that can be run without any dependencies. This makes your python code more portable and easily deployable. Alright instead of using .NET run let's try to use the compute.exe which we just generated so the command is going to be compute.exe and then the working directory is going to be different this is the folder where the exe file is present all right now i mentioned my working directory in a relative path and i've kept shell equal to true because it's giving error while running the exe file so i'm just running this and i have given compute 50 20 and i'm getting 1000 as a result so basically instead of running .NET, i am running the exe file created by .NET. So let's try to run it again and you can see the output is also coming fast because it's a build created by the language. So this is how you can create portable exe files from your languages and use it in python so that it's more easily deployable. So that's it guys. This is how you can use the sub process python module to communicate with other language programs or communicate with the command line and do many powerful automations in python. You can see I've created a blog post on running external commands or using other languages in python using the sub process module. I have given the source code so that you can copy paste and practice it in your own computer. So be sure to check out the link of this blog post in the description of this video. I have also given the reference to the official documentation. Feel free to give your valuable feedback or ask any questions in the comment section. Hope you like this video guys. Thank you for watching. Peace.